this morning. Glad we got several out today. So uh, we know uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer in this moment. Uh, of course, Emily and Emily's had to go to the hospital, so her nose is a foreign blood this morning. So baby is not going to go to the hospital. So we don't uh, pray much to them. Continue to keep the wood in the prayers. And, um, I say not doing real good, so we're to for him. Many uh, lost loved ones. Of course, Miss Glenn was not here. The brother passed away uh, yesterday, right after coach. He's going to be at the Norris New Funeral Home. I'm, I looked this morning and I didn't see no rain. It said rain was to be <coughs> made later. And so we want to keep uh, Miss Glenn and them in the prayers on that. Also, I know there's several others that uh, McKenzie family, uh, all McKenzie sisters, our friend was yesterday. Uh, Estes family, which was Jim Will Harper's uh, daughter. We will keep out the prayers too, that, that family of prayers. And as I said this morning, uh, Ricky Riddle, a friend of mine over Glasgow, where he passed away. His funeral was yesterday. Uh, the Nunley family down some of the shame. We will keep them in the prayers. And also the Relford family up there in Canada and the Feast family. And so we need to serve up. And so we just want to uplift them and keep them in the prayers. I pray for all those that are traveling on vacation and stuff. And, and uh, we just want to pray to God just to pour out the Spirit for them. Does anybody else have a request upon your heart this morning uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer? Anyone, Doctor? There's a guy that I work with. His 19-year-old daughter's on life support, so just remember him. Really? 19-year-old daughter on life support. Let's keep that in Amen. Somebody else? <coughs> Let's not forget, on the 18th, uh, Jonathan Vaughn will be here to sing for us that Sunday night at 530. I see. Uh, just uh, uh, keep that in prayers and, and encourage that. And then also, you know, uh, we have the... Uh, Children's needy children's benefit coming up on September the fourteenth. I know somebody talked about maybe changing the date, but you know, I guess maybe we'll just leave it. I've already got churches in Glasgow that's handing out flyers, and I've got to send some up in Green. So, uh, some people on Green are there, can And so let's not forget on uh, uh, September the fourteenth, our needy children fund cookout. A fundraiser and singing. The message will be coming the same from Glasgow. And then uh, also, as I call us, the New Direction Delinquents, we'll be getting back together and we'll be singing uh, here that evening. And I encourage you just to be praying much for that. That God pour out His Spirit upon it. I know we're going to be in competition with those big singing on the square up here, but you know, I believe God's still saying who, who's going to come is going to come. So, but y'all just uh, pray much for that. Benefits, and hopefully, we can be able to meet the needs of those uh, uh, kids, many more kids, uh, through the school system that we work with to be able to reach more to uh, get to have a good Christmas this year. So, pray, Amen. pray much for that also, ladies. Pray for uh, our nation. Amen. It needs our prayers. Pray for Israel, as Mike always says. We need to uplift them in our prayers. And, and we need to also pray for our churches. You know, they basically. There's still many churches that are without pastor, and then there's some that that's pastors. I mean, uh, you talk, listen to them, people. I talk to a lot of them, you know, and they, they kind of wonder, you know, well, you know they, they don't have a very big crowd. A lot of them just have one, one service, and they don't have a lot of crowds coming and everything. I said it's just part of God's prophecy. I said, you know, it's a falling away coming, you know, before the end of time. You know, we just got to be ready, amen? Amen. We're looking for the promise of His coming. He said He's coming back, and and we believe it, amen. 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 Somebody else got a word. A spoken request for y'all. Yesterday, uh, me and John went on a run with some of our friends and stuff. And every weekend when we go on a run, we usually have someone that comes up to us asking us what church we go to. And we do fellowship and we worship and we pray during our runs and stuff. And a lady, I'm not going to mention her name or nothing, but she came up to us what, and, and it's, I don't know how to say it. This is where it all starts. It's she's trying to put forth, you know, into God. She she's lost. She's got kids that she's want to bring to church. So I want prayers for her because she's trying to find a church that she needs a family to go to. You know, she lives way up there in Bowling Green, but we 
Bridget, even John this morning, before he went to work, he, he said, mention her in the prayers and how he's praying for her, too, hoping that she finds a place to call home.
Yeah.
help. You had a, a good week this week. Uh, I, to me, I think every week is a, a, a good week. Every day is a good day. I mean, the Lord's give it to us. And I always like to uh, see old verse, you know, this is the day the Lord's made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we ought to be glad God has given us another day. And, you know, we shouldn't be going around us and grumbling about having another day and everything. We should be glad and rejoicing in it that God has given us another day of life. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles with this morning, I'd like to turn over to the book of Titus. Over to the book of Titus in chapter 2. And you know, as I, as I was uh, uh, thinking about this, you know, I can remember back years ago, back in night, January of 1987, I can remember the day that the Lord came into my heart and life, and, and you know, I kind of I remember that old song we used to sing up here a lot. I, I kind of wrote the words down to it, but it's simply, I remember the day. And you know, that's something that we need to look forward to. You know, if you can look back in your life and, and you can remember that day that the Lord had saved you, I mean, if we're a born again, blood bought child of the King, we ought to know when that day is. We ought to know. We might not know the exact day, the exact time, the exact hour. But you ought to be able to go back to a place to where you can think back and, and whenever you got down on your knees and cried out to God to save your soul, that when the Lord entered into your heart and life, you ought to remember that in your heart and life. Why? Because there was a drastic change took place in your heart and life. Whenever God came within your soul, came within your heart and life, whenever you opened up and let the Lord come into your heart and life, that's a day that we all never ought to forget in our lives. Amen. 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 Man. Titus chapter 2. We're going to start reading in verse 11. Titus chapter 2. Verse 11. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say wait. Everybody's there this morning. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Titus chapter 2, beginning verse 11. Well, the grace of God to bring us salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in the present world, looking for that blessed hope uh, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, this is that who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from uh, all iniquity and purify to himself uh, a peculiar people zealous unto good works. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you one more time for God to stand behind this old sacred desk. For God's weak and feeble as we are, Father Lord. I pray first of all, God, move me out of the way, Lord. Thy spirit may be able to speak in this, but me in the words pleasing to you, God. Lord, I can't do it on my own, Father. I need help from the Holy Spirit today, Father. And I pray, God, Lord, to strengthen me, dear God, in your spirit today, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, if there be a need here today, dear Father, we just want to uplift them to God. We know that God, we've got We've got many that are out there, sick upon the bed of affliction. We've got many of lost loved ones, dear God. Lord, we've got many, dear God, that are vacationing, but we've got many also, dear God, that just didn't come this morning because we just didn't want to, Lord. I, I just pray just touch them all, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. I, we pray you'll bring comfort to those that are hurting and need peace and heart to love, dear Father. And Lord, for those that are concerned, we pray conviction in our hearts, God, Lord, that you just deal with them heavenly, dear God. And Father, we pray today, dear God, Lord, as we go forward in this word of yours today, Father, Lord, help us to look back to God and remember that joyous day, dear God, once you came into our hearts and lives, dear God, Lord, that you started a new life in us, dear Father, Lord, we thank you for that, dear God, Lord, we ain't always done thanks for what we Lord, but we're just so thankful, dear God, Lord, that you, that you pick us back up and point us back in the right direction each and every time, Father, Lord, if we just call upon your name, Father, I pray today, dear God, that they might have think they want to hear today, dear God. God. Lord, it might need to call upon your name, dear God, for the forgiveness of sin, for salvation, dear God. I pray that they would be that day, dear Father, Lord. And Lord, if they be one here today, dear God, maybe they may have forgotten what you've done for them, dear God. I pray, God, they'd come back and renew a right spirit within that, Father. Oh, Father God, just help us today. Forgive us for we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. I'd like to use for a thought this morning simply, I remember the day. I remember the day. And as, I, as I wrote down the words of that song, I, 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 I kind of looked at a few things in it, but it simply says this. I was, what was it that brought us that? In this first slide, it says, I was burdened down with sin. No happiness was found with 
meaning. I never knew the meaning of joy down in my soul. Oh, let me tell you something, church. Whenever we're apart from God and we don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's what it takes. These burdens that come in our hearts and lives, these trials and tribulations that come in our hearts and lives, that makes us open up our eyes to see how much we need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that's the first thing we want to look at this morning. I remember whenever I come to God, I can remember yeah. back at about an age of 10 years old, how the Lord it was dealing with me every night. And I'm here to tell you, I would go to bed, I was burdened down as a lost child. I would go to bed and I would pray, the Lord save me, but I would pray, God, God let me live another day. Lord, I was scared to death that I would go to bed at night and that I would wake up, wouldn't wake up the next morning, but that I would have my sleep. And I would go to bed at night, after night, after night, for 17 years before I got saved. Hey, Lord, don't let me die in my sleep. Lord, give me another day. Give me another time. And you know, all, most of y'all know that my testimony had stuck the death of my youngest brother to get me to come to Christ. But I want to tell you, the first thing I recognized, I was burnt down with sin, church. I was burnt down with a sinful lifestyle, with my past. I was burnt down with sin, and there was no happiness there to be found within. All the Bible tells us in Psalms. In Psalm chapter 32, in church chapter 32, we get to verse 1. It says, Blessed is he. I, I like this part right here. He says, Blessed or happy is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whom the Spirit there is no God. Because let me tell you something, whenever I kept silence, my bones waxed stole through the road. And all day now, long for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Oh, let me tell you something. What he's telling us right there is simply this when it was lost and undone, when it, we didn't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that grief and that burden that come within our hearts and lives of dying lost, dying without a Savior, about dying without Jesus in your hearts and lives, that burden there. I want to tell you, as he says, right there. He says his hand, the hand of God, was heavy upon me. I want to tell you, you yeah. ever been a, a lost and you have, you know what I'm talking about. How the heavy hand of God came down upon you. And let me tell you, why was he doing that? So that you could be saved, church. Amen. That was why God was doing that. He brought his heavy hand that our psalmist there saying that. I cried all night long. I lay down and I cried all night. Not knowing if I was going to be able to wake again. I begged God. I didn't know how to be saved. I just begged God. Lord, give me that other day. But the psalmist, he said that. I like what he said in the first part. Blessed or happy is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Oh, let me tell you, I was burdened down with that sin. I was not only burdened down with the sin, but I want to tell you, there was a burden within my soul. The Bible says in Psalms uh, chapter 38, uh, beginning with verse 1, it says, uh, O Lord, rebuke thee not thy wrath, uh, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure, for thine arrow stick. Uh, stick fast in me. What is that? Uh, that's something you don't hear much about anymore, but that's the convicting power of God. Uh, whenever the Word of God sticks with us, uh, when the Word of God stains our consciousness, uh, whenever the Word of God convicts us of our things, uh, of our lost condition, he says, thy arrows, uh, he said, they stick fast in the head, and thy hand presses me sore, there is no soundness in my flesh, uh, because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones, uh, because of what, because of my sin, uh, that we just grief and sorrow, church, uh, and torment in our hearts and lives, uh, whenever we away from God, uh, whenever we don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, or whether or not we do know Jesus, but yet we've strayed. God is going to convict us. God's hand is going to be sore in us. He said the verse 4, for my iniquities are gone over my head. They, and as, a, as a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. We realize here's the right of sin. All this sin in my life, uh, it's compassion about me. It's coming upon me. He said my wounds, they stink uh, and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Uh, I'm troubled. I'm bowed down greatly. 
I go a morning all the day long, for my lungs are filled with a lonesome disease, and there's no soundness in my place. I'm feeble and so broken. I have roared my reason of my this this quietness of my heart. Lord, all my desires before thee. And my groaning is not hid from thee. Let me tell you what the writer's doing here. The writer recognized here how much he needed Jesus Christ in his heart and life. I'm here to tell you, let me tell you, we try to carry all this load ourselves. We think we don't need Jesus Christ. We think that we can gain salvation by somebody else's coattail. We think we can gain salvation by shaking somebody's hand. We we think we can gain salvation by being a good individual, by giving money, by doing these good works. But the only way that we can gain salvation, church, is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's Amen. the only way. Amen. This writer here, all these troubles and trials, as the writer here in the book of Psalms, all these things is coming down upon him, the pressures of God. Oh, can you remember when you was lost and how God would deal with you day after day? Day after day. And I'm thankful this morning that God was patient with me. He knew how stubborn and hard headed, but He was patient with me. It took Him 17 years to get me where I needed to be. But I'm here to tell you, He got me where I needed to be. I didn't like the way He got me there, but God got me to where I needed to be. And church, I'm here to tell you, they ain't none of us like to get to that point. But I'm here to tell you, once you get there, oh, once you get there, blessed is the man whose transgressions is forgiven. Oh, church, we ought to be thankful this morning that the God has saved me. Oh, church, I can remember that day. Looks like it was yesterday. How the Lord burned my heart. I about run plumb over Orville Garden trying to get out the pew. I, I can remember coming up here. George Shipman was on one side of me, and Orville was on behind me. I could have done about knocked him down. But I will tell you something, church. I, I'll never forget the day that the Lord saved me. Amen. Oh, church, the writer, he, he realized. He says, all this treasure. He says all these things. He says, I'm feeble, I'm broken. That's what God do. Sometimes it takes, God's got to break us in order to make us, amen. I mean, God's got to break us so that he can make us into what he wants to be. Oh, he says, he was broken, I'm feeble and sore broken. I'm broken by reason of this Christ my heart. Lord, all my desires before you. And my groaning is not here for you. My heart painted, my strength painted. In other words, I can't do it no more, Lord. I can't write from you no more, Lord. Here lies what he's trying to say here. As for the light of mine eyes, it also is gone from me. My lovers and my friends, stand it off from my sore. And my king must stand afar off. They also that seek after my life, lay stand for me. And they that seek my hurt, seek me. It's Jesus' things. And imagine uh, the seeds all the day long. But as a deaf man heard not, and I was as a dumb man and opened not my mouth, and I was a man that heard not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. You know what the psalmist realized here? This psalmist realized here that all of my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't hope in man. I can't hope in this. I can't put my hope in that. But all all of my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. All these pains and troubles and trials that broke me. Now, Lord, here I am. Make me and use me. That's what it takes, church. We've got to come to God with a broken and a contrite spirit. Oh, church, we see here what he says. In verse 4, 15, he says, For thee, O Lord, do I hope that I will hear, O Lord my God. For I say and hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, and that they magnify themselves against me, for I am ready. Did you hear what he said there? He says, I am ready to halt. In other words, I'm ready to give up, Lord. I'm ready to give up, Lord. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of this life. I'm ready just to give up, Lord, and give it all to you. And church, that's what we've got to get to that place. Whenever we're tired of fighting, that we're ready to just give it all to God. The psalmist here, he said, for I am now ready to halt. And my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity. 
I will be sorry for my sin. Did you hear what he's saying right there? What the writer's doing right here is he's repenting of the sin in his heart and life. He's repenting to God the Father. I say, here I am, Lord, just an old sinner. I'm just an old sinner, Lord. You know all my faults and failures, Lord. I'm just an old sinner, but I'm thankful today that even in our own sinful nature, ain't you glad that Jesus still loves us? He still loved us, even in our times of sorrow and sickness. When we couldn't love ourselves, didn't want nobody else to love us. Let me tell you, God still loved us. He was willing to send his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And that's exactly what he done. Oh, the psalmist, he recognized. He recognized that I can't do this. I've got to have some help here. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you, he said, I was burdened down with sin. No happiness, no happiness was found within. Let me tell you, church, we think we, <coughs> we think we find happiness out here in the world. We think we find happiness in material things. We say, well, if I, if I can have this nice big new house, it'll make me happy. You still got to keep it up, amen. Amen. I, I mean, you amen. might have say, well, if I can get this fine-looking vehicle, that'll make you happy. You still got maintenance on it, too. Because when them bills come due, you think, oh, no, what was I thinking? You still got problems and sorrows. You think all these things out here in the world will bring you happiness. But let me tell you something, church. The only real peace and happiness that we'll ever find is in Jesus. It's in Jesus. We, I can't understand it. I can't begin to tell you what it's like uh, to, to feel that happy. It's, uh, it's, it's just unexplainable. But under the weight of all this world, that, that's what the psalmist was crying out there. As he was crying out to God, the weight of the world is upon me. Amen. And he needed the Lord to lift that load from him. You ever feel like that sometimes? That you're carrying the weight of the world upon your own shoulders. Amen. You ever feel like it's all that you just you've done all you can do, so you just can't do no more. And you know when we get to that point right there, when we get to the point where we've done all we can do, so we can't do no more. That's when God can work. Amen. That's when God can move in. Why is that? It's because when we've done all we can do, so we can't do no more. That's when we learn to give it to God. In church, that's what we've got to do. No matter what you're going through in life, you've got to learn to give it to God. He'll help you carry that load, church. Don't Amen. try to carry it yourself. The writer there, he recognized. He says, oh, all these things are just way too heavy for me. And all that sorrow and grief, all that done was brought pain, suffering. Stones you joy. You couldn't find that peace of mind. That's why he says, I was burned down with sin. No happiness was found with me. There wasn't no joy. There wasn't no peace. The Bible says in Isaiah 57, 21, there, there is no peace saith my God to the wicked. I was a wicked individual when I was apart from God. We were all wicked individuals apart from Jesus Christ. When we was out doing things on our own before salvation came to our hearts and lives. There was no peace of heart in there. There was no joy there. I will tell you, I kind of done like I can remember when I went down. I was kind of like a Tony's wife that put the knife, Darlene, what she'd say. She used to get happy and she'd yeah. say, uh, that day she said, I remember when I went down, she said, I went down an old beggar. But she said, praise God, I came up a millionaire. And church, that's a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory that we cannot even begin to imagine Amen. until we have lived it. Right here, all these old things out of the world, it's not going to bring you happiness. Money's not going to bring you happiness. You say, well, it, it, it sure don't hurt none. <laughs> Let me tell you what's good. At. The more money you got, the more money you're going to spend. That's right. Yeah. The more money you got, the more you want. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. People say, <laughs> I've heard people say, well, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Or it says, they say money is the root of all evil, but it's really the love of money is the root of all evil. I always tell this. So I'll say, I don't even have it long enough to get there a relationship with it. Well, I don't love it. <laughs> it's gone. See, it's, it's gone. So here we see here, as the writer tells us right here, we, he said there was no happiness, man. He says, there is no 
no peace. There is no peace, saith God, saith my God, to the wicked. Isaiah 59 8 says, The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment in their gods. They have made them crooked paths. And whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. I didn't know what peace was. I thought peace, I could find peace in alcohol. I thought I could find peace in all these other things. But let me tell you something the sting of God's convicting power in the heart and mind was always there. Amen. was always there. I couldn't get away from it, Tracy. I mean, I couldn't go. I couldn't run far enough. I couldn't get drunk enough. I, I couldn't go far enough. I, I couldn't hide far away. Then it's always there. Right. It's always there gnawing at you. Gnawing at you. And you know, it show up when you least expect it. Yep. It's kind of like that little dog my cousin had. They had her for a while off. I hated that thing. <laughs> You'd go to their house when they, they was living down in here. They lived down in Big Brother, some company county. We'd go down there and see them. You'd, I, you'd think that, that dog would know where you'd sit down. The next thing you know, here it's darted out from underneath the couch and gnawing on your leg. <laughs> That's what the Spirit of God will do. I want to tell you something. When you least expect it, that Spirit of God, it will jump out and it will start gnawing on your conscience. It will start gnawing on your heart. It will start gnawing on you until you give your heart life to Christ. Amen. That's why he said there, they know peace. But what did it take? I was burdened down with sin. The happiness was found with me. I never knew the meaning. Joy down in my soul. But when at last, this verse says, I finally met. Contentment filled my soul like I'd never felt. Heaven came down, and there was glory all around when he saved my soul. Ain't you glad to know that, that whenever God draws you, the Bible tells us in John 6.44, it says, No man can come to me except the Father who has sent me draw him. I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, that's how God will draw you. Uh, he'll get a hope of that heart of yours. Uh, and I mean, he'll bring her out. Uh, he'll draw you to an altar of repentance. Uh, he'll draw you. Uh, church, I'm thankful this morning uh, that God called me. Uh, and I never knew what what that was like uh, until I let it go. I let I quit fighting uh, against God's strong spirit and I let him tug uh, and pull me to an altar of it. And that's when I found real peace and joy and contentment in my heart and life. Amen. We've got to realize the Bible tells us in Luke, in Luke in chapter 18, it simply says this. I can remember that. Luke chapter 18, beginning of verse 9, says there, he and he spake to us, this is power of power, and to certain of the trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised the other. Two men went up to the temple to pray, and the one Pharisee and the, and the other a publican, and the Pharisee stood and prayed thus, with his shepherd said, God, I thank thee that I am not as all men are, as men other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, uh, or even as this public. And he said, I fast twice in a week. Uh, in a week. Uh, and he says, I give tithes to all that, the, that I possess. Uh, and he said, this old public and church, this right here is where I was at. And I'm sure it was you too when you came to Christ. It says here, he says, uh, and the public standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote himself on the breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that was what i have done. Whenever God draws me to that old altar of penance, I was broken. I was out of shape. I was broken and beaten down a bit. And God drawed me to that old altar. And all I could say was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. A sinner. Because that's all I was, was an old sinner. And I'm thankful today for that drawing power of God. When it really brought me, even though it took the death of my brother, to get me to open my eyes up. But then again, I realized what true joy was in my heart and life. Yep. Amen. Whenever God drew me to that altar of repentance, and I didn't know how to pray. I, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what it was like. I didn't know what I was supposed to say. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that when you don't know what to say, God knows what your heart's saying. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that whenever you cried, you 
can't cry no more and you can't got no words for it. Like God, God knows what our heart is saying. And I'm thankful that day. I can, I can remember. First thing God told me to do, I had to offer just somebody. I had all to get somebody. I know I've told y'all this before down through the years, but I had all to get somebody. The first thing God told me, you need to go make a man. And what did I say? <laughs> Lord, what about my fault? <laughs> What's that? That's what we always say. The Lord, what about my fault? He said, don't matter. You're the one that's changed. Now prove it. Now I'm going to tell you why when I went and done that. I was working out here at Ronald Phelps and saw me up that town. And when I done that, I want to tell you what, if they hadn't been a cab on that forklift, I believe I'd have floated down of it. It was like a big weight was lifted off of me. Church, I'm here to tell you this morning. That's what my God can do. That's what my God can do. He can take the burdens of this old life. He can take the troubles of your old life. He can take your old past. And he can lift it all away from you. Lift that heavy load. That heavy burden off of you. And that's what he done. That's why I can be able to come up and say, I went down that beggar. And I came up a millionaire. That's why the Bible says in Psalms. In Psalms. I, I finally left. It's in Psalms 34. It says, the Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart. And save as such as be of a contrite spirit. And that word contrite in the Greek means crushed. God crushed me. He crushed me so that he could make me. He crushed me so that, you know, just like the Bible talks about the potter and the clay. When he makes a vessel that, that, was a, that, that had a blemish on it, what would he do? He wouldn't throw it away. Let me tell you something, I have a lot of blemishes. He would throw it away, but he would take it, and he would crush it back up, and, and he would add that moisture to it. I believe, I, I believe that's the moisture of the Holy Spirit uh, when it comes to our hearts and lives. Uh, he'd soften our old heart and hearts after he crushed us uh, and make us into something that he can work with, uh, something that his hands can get a hold of uh, and can mold into what he wants it to be. In church, that's exactly what he does for me, and that's exactly what he can do for you today. If you'll just be submissive to the Holy Spirit, I was praying that I was sin. Had no peace and joy with him. Oh, church. Didn't know what happiness was. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me. And be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God. And there is none else. Amen. Do you want to hear what he's saying right there? He's simply telling us right there in his word that, that there's no other way to be saved. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. That song goes on, he says, he said, I was burned down to sin. No happiness was found to be. I never knew the mean the joy down in my soul. When at last I finally nailed. I like that. Contentment filled my soul like it never failed. Heaven came down, and there was glory all around when he saved my soul. And then he says, I remember the day when the Lord saved me. All of heaven came down. I was happy and free. And I like this part. Glory filled my soul. For I knew the Lord had made me whole. I shall never forget when the Lord saved me. Ain't you glad to know that, that whenever God saves your soul, you can know without a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. It's not no hope, so salvation. It's not no faith, so salvation. It's a no, so salvation that there's no doubt, no doubt within my heart and mind that God saved me. And I'm sure it's a sign for you that you can stand up today and say, I thank God that I know, that I know, that I know without a shadow of a doubt. I've been born again. I'm a child of God. Church, that's something we have to go back to. If you can't go back to that time, then whenever you knelt, if you can't remember that day, that you knelt in an old fashioned altar somewhere, if you can't go back to that place, then maybe you need to find that place. Maybe you need to make sure that.
that you might know without a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. So many times people think, I like this part, last verse, so it says, Now a life of peacefulness deep within my heart abides. God took all that oh, bitterness, all that worry. I don't have to lay down at night anymore and think, wonder, Lord, don't let me die in my sleep. You know, as a Christian, I get to thinking, what a way to go. Amen. Amen. You just imagine going to sleep one night. Go to bed one night without any worries and peace and wake up on the other side of glory. Amen. Can you just imagine that? I mean, here come all your family running. I've been waiting for you. Come on, son. Come on, grandson. Come on home. I've been waiting for you. Can you just imagine that, church? Amen, brother. Oh, I'm going to tell you, when you can lay down at night when you're a child of God. You don't worry about them things. You don't worry about whether I, well, I hope I wake up another day. It don't matter anymore. When you're a child of God, our longing is to be home. And that's what he says here. Now a life of peace went deep within my heart of eyes since the day that Jesus, he took my sins away. And to heaven I will go to spend in this ages while they ever roll, praising his name. For the glorious day that he saved my soul. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Church, if you ain't got that kind of peace and contentment in your heart and life, if you don't know whether or not you're saved or not, you, you might think, well, you might think, well, I've done too bad. I've done too bad. Let me tell you something. I ain't concerned about your past. I'm concerned about your future. Amen. Right. That's what I'm concerned about. Where are you going to spend eternity in? If you died right now, where would you spend eternity? Where would you go? You'd either go one of two places. You'd either be in heaven or you'd be in hell. Where are you going to spend eternity at, church? Where are you going to spend eternity at? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll spend eternity in a devil's hell to burn for eternity forever and ever. In the lake of fire. If you're a child of God, look what's waiting on the other side. Amen. You know what my heart's desire is for you today is this. As I don't want us, each and every one of us, to be together in heaven. Amen. All right. I called the text Teresa last night. I said, Teresa, I said, Lord, don't change my mind. Go on, Teresa. I want Teresa to sing this song of invitation this morning. And let me tell you something, church. If you don't, can't go back to a place in time in your life that you gave Jesus, asked Jesus to come into your heart, then why don't you come up here this morning? Why don't you come up here this morning? And ask the Lord, Lord, would you say, forgive me, I said and you know, you can know, you can know what that peace is. Are you going to live a perfect life? No. Not as long as you're in this old flesh, it's going to be a battle. Right. But I'm here to tell you that God is on your side. He can help you walk that life if you just put your trust and your faith in Him. All you've got to do is come and give your heart back to Jesus today. Well, Chris, if you're here this morning, you got lost loved ones in your family and friends. And you want to see them in heaven someday. It might take your prayers to get them there. I'm only here because somebody prayed for me. You're only here because somebody prayed for you. Amen. Our, their heart's desire was that they could be in heaven one day with you. Our hearts and desires, Christians today, should be that same desire. And I want us all <coughs> to be together. <laughs> you might be here this morning, maybe you're lost, and maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you feel God just twisted that heart. Draw you to altar again. 
Maybe you need to come this morning and ask the Lord to save you this morning. Whatever your need is today, maybe you just need to come this morning, pray for yourself, pray for strength. Maybe you need to do that this morning. As everyone stands, go ahead, Chris. Mm -hmm.